So, which is the most private and safe browser? Is it Edge? Is it Chrome? Is it Firefox or is it Brave? In order to look into that, look under the hood, I actually have Wireshark running on the system, monitoring every single connection that's being made. And this is going to show us exactly what is happening when we use these browsers. So let's start up Edge and let's see what happens. Well, immediately we're connected to scorecardresearch.com. And if we look that up, Scorecard Research, a service of full circle studies, is part of Comscore, a leading global market research effort that studies and reports internet trends and behavior. Not much needs to be said there. <laughs> if you open up Microsoft Edge, you are automatically consenting to participating in a study by not even Microsoft, by a third party company that's going to collect your data to study internet trends and behavior. Now, other than that, we're also obviously connecting to Amazon.com. And this, I believe, is Amazon going through Akamai, which is a CDN. And then obviously Bing.com, Amazon.com, a lot more of Bing, Google.com, Bing APIs, events.data.microsoft.com, a lot more of scorecard research. Because after all, Edge is built on top of Chrome. We've got g.doubleclick.net. These are trackers and some JS queries via Cloudflare. But hey, that's uh, Microsoft Edge. <laughs> it is their business model, so no surprises there. Let's see what happens when we open Google Chrome. Immediately, the same stuff, Google APIs, client services.googleapis, accounts.google.com, update.googleapis, optimization guide. Interestingly, they don't name anything telemetry, but of course, these are just the requests made. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes and the kind of data that's being sent. I mean, seeing some connections here is not entirely a surprise. It is a web browser after all. It is supposed to connect to the internet. And the fact that Google and Microsoft are collecting your data is probably not news to you. So let's look at some of the more private browsers, or should I say historically private browsers. The most popular one is probably Firefox. Now, if we open that up, let's see what we get. So it's a very long list here. So I'm going to try to scroll up to the top of it if I can. <laughs> oh, dear. So to start off, we have cdn.mozilla.net, content signature, Amazon Trust, which I believe is uh, the sponsored link by Mozilla. Bunch of requests to that, probably just to load the content on screen. Then we've got services.mozilla.com, Firefox settings, getpocket.cdn.mozilla.net. So that is for the recommended stories that you see here, which again reminds me a lot of Edge. And look what we have here. We've got incoming telemetry.mozilla.org. More telemetry, more images, DigiCert for our certificates, push.services.mozilla.com. That's just, I guess, the websites that are listed here and maybe some of the stories that are being loaded. More.co.uk, going through some CDN. You get the point. Um, if you thought opening up Firefox would have been a clean slate, or you'll be disappointed. Now, I know many of you will point out that you can obviously go into settings and you can turn off shortcuts, you can turn off recommended by pocket, you can turn off recent activity, and then you've got a cleaner browser. And we can probably get rid of a lot of these requests that way. And it's only going to be the telemetry, the services, and a few other queries being made. And arguably, it's a little bit easier to do that with Firefox than it is to do it with Google or Microsoft. But what concerns me is that every browser is moving in this direction, which suggests it is driven by user behavior. Now, I don't personally like the sponsored stories or the news that Edge tries to feed me. I always disable that stuff. But the fact that Firefox by default comes like that as well, and I have to disable it the same way I have to disable it in Edge, shows that there's a bigger trend here. Now let's look at Brave, a browser that advertises itself for privacy features. And if we scroll down to the bottom here, let's see what we've got. So we've got componentupdater.brave.com, extguard.io, googledomains.com. By the way, both Brave and Firefox use uh, Google safe browsing services. So we're going to see some requests related to that. We've also got, interestingly, some Microsoft.com related queries, but I'm not sure if this is happening from system or from the browser. Variations.brave.com, these are the main queries. It looks a little bit cleaner. There's nothing explicitly stating something like telemetry. But again, if we have a look at Brave, on one hand, you've got trackers and ad blocked, 
And of course, it does come with a built-in ad blocker. But at the same time, you've got Brave Rewards. And if you scroll down, turn on Brave News and never miss a story. So again, going in the same direction. Brave News is ad supported with private anonymized ads. And it makes you wonder for how long. At the end of the day, this is their business model as well. And if you go to their official site and you see how they market themselves, so they say it's the best privacy online. And don't get me wrong, this is all good stuff. But then if we look at their own menu, one of the things you see is private advertising. Help shape the attention economy of tomorrow. So they're going to do advertising. They're only going to make it anonymous. And the issue with that, obviously, is that anonymized ads don't work as well, which is why the big companies came up with targeted ads. And it would be amazing if this program was a success, but what I'm guessing is going to happen as this gets more traction, if it does, is that they're going to have to start to introduce maybe a little bit of tracking and a little bit more tracking. Eventually, they're going to move in the same direction as well. But I guess with Brave, you could say that because they rely on the fact that they're private to get users to use them, unlike Microsoft and Google who get users to use them because that's the default browser on their computer, they will be forced to keep the platform private. And I sincerely hope that's the case. But one of the things worth noticing is that regardless of which browser we use, you can see all of the queries we're making within Wireshark. So anybody who is looking at this on the network would be able to see this. Your ISP would be able to see this. So let's say I open up Brave, I navigate to Nottingham.ac. UK, you will see a request pop up over here. There you go. HTTPS Nottingham.ac.uk. Now, as long as you're using HTTPS, the traffic that's being transmitted is going to be encrypted, but everyone can still see every single site that you're visiting, use it for marketing purposes, whatever. And that is why we're going to talk about another browser, which is Tor. Now, let's see what happens when I start the Tor browser. We're up and loaded. Let's see what requests were made. Oh, wait. There's no request. And if I go to a site over here, again, nothing shows up. And that is because Tor is a fundamentally different architecture. Think of it as a decentralized VPN browser. So instead of a VPN where you've got a centralized entity that's providing the servers, that's routing, encrypting your traffic, making it anonymous, you've got random users all over the world who are doing that for you. Now, the benefit to that, obviously, is, well, you're not trusting a central entity. But the downside is, well, all of that data has to eventually come out somewhere, and that's what they call an exit node. And if you're a Tor exit node and somebody's doing some kind of illegal activity, and that data goes through you, and that is what makes this a very tricky conversation. Now, if you want real privacy, what you would do is you would probably use Tor, and then on top of that, you would use some kind of third party VPN. So just as example, I can go into my F-Secure VPN, just turn that on, and now all of my traffic is going through their servers. Now, of course, every single browser is going to have a private window, which is going to minimize the amount of tracking as well. And of course, they will all have their own privacy policies. Now, even Firefox's privacy policy is not that great, frankly. They say at Mozilla, we believe that privacy is fundamental to a healthy internet, but then when you actually read, they have sections saying, in order to recommend relevant content, they use location data. Firefox uses your IP address. Technical and interaction data. Firefox census data, such as the position, size, and placement of content we suggest. As well as the basic data about your interactions with the content. So if I click on one of their sponsored stories, they're tracking that. So they can suggest the kind of stories I'm more likely to click on. Well, that's exactly the kind of ad tracking that Google and everybody else does. It may not be as extensive, but it's kind of the same thing. And they are sharing it with a third party, which is Pocket. Mozilla and Pocket receive aggregated data about the recommendations you see and click. We also share aggregated data about the sponsored content you see and click with our third party ad platform, Kevl, so advertisers can see how many people click on their articles. So maybe it's anonymized to some extent. Maybe it's a little bit better than Edge and Chrome, but now, I don't even want to look at Chrome or Edge privacy policy, because let's be honest, with those, the choice is simple. Do you want Microsoft's version of Skynet or do you want Google's version of Skynet? 
Imagine what all the cool names people came up with and then in the end we have chat GPT. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below in terms of what you think is the best browser to use and how you set up your internet usage. Now there are other things you can obviously do like using a different DNS service that's going to encrypt your DNS. That's a great way to improve your privacy as well. But at the end of day, if you look at any browser popularity statistic, this is what it looks like. You've got Chrome, Safari and Edge and maybe Safari is probably the most private of the three, but this is what most users are going to use. Even Firefox is way down. Do you just use the browser that's most convenient to you, the features you like the most, or do you actually look into the privacy? And also let me know if you care about stories, because I personally hate new stories being fed in my browser window. But since everybody's doing it, I guess somebody must like them. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe, let me know if you'd like to see more content like this. Now to our sponsor. If you're a fan of open source content, you're gonna love this. CrowdSec is an open source intrusion prevention system that you can deploy on any platform Platform, Windows, Linux, whatever, to block hackers from trying to infiltrate your network. Now, if you don't know how to set this up, CrowdSec recently set up the CrowdSec Academy, which gives you the option to sign up and join one of their courses to learn how to set up an effective intrusion protection system. I've already set it up on Ubuntu and it's super simple and easy to use. CrowdSec allows you to ingest alerts from various sources, parse through the logs, and build your own intrusion detection system. You can set up custom rules, leverage the community black list and automate your entire security process. So if you're an individual or company looking to monitor alerts from various different sources, this is a great tool to do it. Once you have it set up, you're gonna look at the CrowdSec console. This is gonna show you a bird's eye view of all your agents, scenarios, and alerts. You've also got access to cyber threat intelligence. So this is where you can look up any kind of IP that you like. So just gonna paste a malicious IP here. And if we do a search, it's gonna give us the confidence level and the various actions associated with it. So as you can see, this one is flagged as a bad actor. The attack details show it's an HTTP scanner and crawler. You can see the reporting period and you can also make a comment. So it's very much community driven. And while some parts of the project are still in development, still in beta, this is a great time to jump in and start playing around with the tools, getting involved with the project. So check them out, link in the description, show them some love for supporting the PC Security channel. This is Leo, thank you so much for watching, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.